Okay, hey, here we are in Applications of Calculus, page one. We're going to start with kinematics because the displacement, velocity, and acceleration is a great way to look at the relationships between derivatives and integrals. S of t is the displacement function. Its magnitude is the distance from O, the origin, and its sign indicates the direction from O. So see this number line? The O is the zero point of the number line. S of t is the function which tells you uh, how far away you are from the origin and also in which direction you are. So positive, negative, and uh, this is the distance. Um, since s of t has both magnitude and direction, it is a vector, not a scalar. When s of t is greater than 0, p is located to the right of the origin. When s of t equals 0, p of t, p is located on the origin. And when s of t is less than 0 or negative, p is located to the left of the origin. Average velocity is the ratio of displacement in relation to the time taken from t1 to t2. Um, you guys know that speed equals distance divided by time, velocity equals uh, displacement divided by time. Um, basically that's like a, a slope of uh, a function which has s of t on the y-axis and has t on the x-axis. Um, let's say that the s of t function is this black curve here, okay? When you find the average velocity of this displacement function, you just pick out two points, a beginning point and an ending point, and then you make a slope triangle for those two points, and you calculate that slope. You can see that the slope triangle, this red triangle, um, doesn't exactly follow the black curve because it's a straight line and the black curve is a curve. Um, it doesn't matter. You are only concerned with these two points and the slope triangle in between them, okay? Um, that's why the average velocity doesn't necessarily match um, velocities along the curve, okay? All right, so the formula for the average velocity is uh, the displacement at time two minus the displacement at time one divided by time two minus time one. So basically the difference in the uh, displacements divided by the difference in time. That's average velocity. Instantaneous velocity at a particular time is the gradient of the tangent to the time versus displacement graph at that point. So for example, let's um, say that we would like to have the instantaneous velocity at point m here that would be a tangent line slope a tangent line um, slope uh, which we drew here with the blue straight line notice that the blue straight line does not match the red triangle diagonal line because the red triangle diagonal line is the straight line connecting points m and f and the uh, blue line is a tangent line at m. Okay, it's the instantaneous velocity at x at t equals 1. Okay, so how do we calculate instantaneous velocity? We do that, remember, with the derivative because the derivative is the slope of the tangent line at that point. So what we do is instead of doing s of t2 minus s of t1 and subtracting t2 minus t1 and finding the slope, we're just going to find the derivative of the s function and we're going to plug in the time for example t1 and that gives us the instantaneous velocity at t1 notice it's not the the velocity between t1 and t2 the average velocity is the velocity between two times the instantaneous velocity is the velocity at a certain time so we just need to give it one time value t1 for example 
average acceleration is similar to average velocity. The only difference is where velocity is the change in displacement divided by time, the acceleration is the change in velocity divided by time. So we're just going to have vt2 minus vt1 divided by t2 minus t1 for the average uh, acceleration. And for instantaneous acceleration, we're going to have, again, a derivative, but this time the derivative is going to be for the velocity quantity. So the derivative of the velocity with, for example, time t1 plugged in would be the instantaneous acceleration at time t1. Okay. Each differentiation with respect to time, we calculate a rate per unit of time. So the units for velocity are meters per second. Also, we can write that as meters per second to the negative one. And the units for acceleration are meters per second squared, which we can also write as meter second to the negative two. Um, number one, a particle P moves in a straight line with a displacement function there, where t is uh, greater than or equal to 0 and is in seconds. Find the average velocity from t equals 1 to t equals 3. Okay, so remember average velocity is this formula right here. So we're just going to write the formula. So average velocity is st2 minus st1 divided by t2 minus t1. What is t1 and t2? t1 is 1, t2 is 3. So we're going to basically replace this with S3 minus S1 divided by 3 minus 1, which is actually equal to 2, right? S3 means we just put 3 here, and we put 3 here. We're going to get 9 plus 9 minus 2, 18 minus 2, which is 16. So this is going to be 16. S of 1 means we're just going to plug in 1 into both T values one here and one here so that would be one plus three minus two which is equal to two so that would be 16 minus two and the bottom is two so that would be 14 divided by two equals seven so that would be uh this is average velocity so it would be seven uh meters per second okay Find the instantaneous velocity at t equals one remember to find instantaneous velocity we take the derivative of the displacement function and we plug in the time value we want which is one i guess so what is the derivative of the displacement function it is 2t plus 3 so i'm going to put 2t plus 3 and i'm going to put 1 into the t value so that would be 5. so the instantaneous velocity is 5 meters per second notice that the average velocity between one and three seconds and the instantaneous velocity at one second don't agree because of this the way this drawing demonstrates just because the um the slope between uh two points along the black curve form this red diagonal triangle slope triangle you can see that um, any tangent line is probably not going to agree with that particular slope, and the one at t equals 1 definitely does not agree. Okay? All right. Um, in terms of what is average velocity, what is instantaneous velocity, average velocity would be, uh, for example, um, if I take 100 km, if I take um, one hour to drive 100 kilometers to Sao Paulo, my average velocity would be the distance I went divided by the time, 100 kilometers divided by one hour. 100 kilometers per hour is my average velocity. However, along the way, if I look at my speedometer at any time, sometimes it reads 120, sometimes it reads 80, sometimes it reads 100. It reads many different values. The instantaneous velocity is the value that shows on the speedometer at any uh, moment. Okay, last one, number three. A particle moves in a straight line with velocity function like so. Find the average acceleration from t equals 1 to t equals 5. So remember, average acceleration is this formula right here. So it's the velocities subtracted. Velocity at t2 minus the velocity at t1 divided by t2 minus t1. And the velocity at t2 is the velocity 
uh, 4 minus the velocity at t1 would be the velocity at 1, and then that would be 4 minus 1. Uh, v of 4 is uh, the same thing as uh, 2 square root of 4 plus 3, and then v of 1 would be 2 square root of 1 plus 3, and the denominator is 4 minus 1, which is 3. So this would be 2 times 2, which is 4, because square root of 4 is 2, right? So 2 times 2 is 4, plus 3 is 7. Uh, 2 times square root of 1 is just 2. Uh, oh, by the way, this is 2 square root of 1 plus 3 in parentheses. So let's be careful about that. 2 plus 3 is 5. divided by 3. So that would be 2 thirds centimeters per second to the negative 2. This is the acceleration um, between 1 and 4 seconds. Find the instantaneous acceleration at t equals 1. Remember, instantaneous acceleration is equal to the derivative of the velocity function with the time value plugged in. So v dash is going to be the derivative of this I'm just going to rewrite this as a exponent of one half because it makes it easy to take the derivative of. If I take the derivative of this, I'm going to get v dash equals two times one half t to the negative one half plus three. The derivative is zero, so this is equal to two times one half is one t to the negative one half. Okay, so basically it's if I want to rewrite it as a square root, it would be 1 over square root of t. Okay, and if I want to find the value of v dash of 1, it would be uh, 1 over square root of t, and I'm going to plug 1 in for t, so that would just be 1. So the, uh, the instantaneous acceleration at t equals 1 happens to be 1 uh, centimeter per uh, second squared. And you can see that it doesn't quite agree with the average acceleration, which is totally expected. Okay, that's it for number one, page one.